Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. My name is Sasha and today we are going to build a DIY e-ink gadget that you can use for many different applications. By the end of this video we will have a pretty cool e-ink tool that we can easily customize to fit our needs. And we will also talk about how you could build a network of these devices or have them integrated into a much bigger system. So let's get started. By now, you have probably seen or at least heard about e-paper or e-ink displays. They are very common in e-book readers, they are used in price tags in stores, some companies use them as visitor badges, and so on. The main advantage of e-ink display over the LCD or OLED displays is their low power consumption and paper-like display. The e-ink display draws power only while it's changing the screen contents. After the screen contents has been updated, you can remove the power completely and it will still show the same content. I have an ink display here connected to my board and you can see that if I press the button, the screen will update. But after the update is complete, I can remove the display completely and it will still show the same content. You can keep it powered off as long as you want and it will still retain the same content. That's pretty cool, right? However, keep in mind that these displays are slow. And when I say slow, I mean really, really slow. For example, for a black and white display, it might take a second or two. And for a multicolor display, it can take even 10 to 15 seconds. This is very slow and not very useful if you're trying to watch a video or show any fast changing information. But e-ink displays are not designed for these applications at all. They are designed for applications where you want to show some information that doesn't change too often. And more importantly, displaying that information without drawing any power. For example, we mentioned price tags in supermarkets. The price does not change that often, but we want to make sure that it's clearly displayed all the time. Another example is an ebook reader. When you're reading a book, it takes some time for you to read the entire page. During that time, the screen contents does not change. So ink displays are perfect for these kinds of applications because they require power only to update the screen contents, but they do not draw any power in order to retain that content. Today we are going to build a simple but very functional gadget that can act as many different things. Keep in mind that while I have selected a few random functions to use as an example, you can very easily use this project as a starting point and modify it to fit your use case. As always, the entire project is open source, open hardware, so you can easily make any changes or improvements to it. In this video, we are going to build an e-ink gadget for the tabletop games. While playing most tabletop games, you need a good random number generator for which we usually use one or more dice. It can also be useful to show information about the state of the game or information about certain characters like character level, health points, attack points, wound counter and so on. All of this information does not change too often, but you want it visible at all times. So for this project I will use two different e-ink displays. One is black and white and can update relatively fast. and the the other one is tricolor red black white display and it takes some time to fully update. In order to drive these displays, the manufacturer will recommend the driving circuit and also how you are supposed to communicate with it. Mine requires a very simple driving circuit and communication is done over SPI bus. In addition to usual SPI signals like MISO, MOSI, CLOCK and CHIP SELECT, we also need two additional lines, data or command pin, which tells the display if the byte we are about to send should be treated as data or command, and the second one is called busy pin. This pin is used by the display to let us know if it's ready to accept new requests or if it's still processing previous requests. Then we need to have a way for the end user to somehow interact with this device. We will use three simple push buttons for this. Depending on your application, three might be too much or not enough. For us, we will use two buttons for navigating the menu, basically as left and right buttons, and the middle button becomes the enter or select button. We also want our unit to be portable and work without any wires attached to it, so we'll use a rechargeable battery for powering it. Then we will need a voltage regulator to regulate battery voltage down to 3.3 volts, which will be used by our microcontroller, ink display and the rest of the system. And obviously we need to be able to recharge the battery once it's empty, so we will add a USB-C connector and a battery charger IC. This simple battery charging IC allows you only to set the charging current via fixed resistor, but for our application, that's all we need. 
Now for the brains of our project. We need to select a microcontroller that has all the features we need, but at the same time it needs to be very low power when idle. Since this is a very simple project, there are many options from different vendors that we can choose from. For this project we will use Nordic's NRF52 microcontroller. And there are a couple of reasons for selecting this one. It is designed for wearables and very low power devices, which is exactly what we need. It is relatively powerful microcontroller, so it should be a good platform for anyone who wants to take this project and expand or improve it. It also has a built-in hardware random number generator, which we can use for generating random numbers or events. And for those who are familiar with NRF series, you probably already know that this chip supports Bluetooth Lower Energy, or BLE. This is a fantastic feature to have and I will explain at the end of the video how we can use it to expand our project even further and integrate it into a much bigger system, but more about that later. Now through the magic of video editing you can see that in just a few seconds I have designed the PCB, manufactured it and assembled it and we are ready to go. Here we have two fully assembled units and I also have another T unit without the enclosure so we can see how everything looks inside. On the back side we have our three buttons that the end user can use to interact with the device. Then on the top side we have a connector for the display. This is where we connect either the black and white or red black and white ink display. Over here we have a USB-C connector for charging the battery, battery charger IC and the voltage regulator. Then we have our microcontroller with supporting passives and high frequency and low frequency oscillators. And over here at the edge we have an antenna that we can use for BLE communication. Now as we mentioned a couple of times before, this device needs to be very low power in order to stretch our battery life as far as possible. The source code is available in the GitHub repo, but without diving too deep into the code, here is a high level picture of what we are doing. On the very first power up, we set up the device. This means setting up oscillators, GPIOs, interrupts, power modes and so on. Then we initialize our state machine with default values, update the screen and then go into a deep power down state. In this power down state, microcontroller draws very little power, but it still has memory retention. So now we are basically waiting for an event, which in our case is a button press. As soon as one of the buttons is pressed, it wakes up the microcontroller, we read which button was pressed and pass it along to the state machine. State machine decides what action should be taken when that button is pressed. For example, generate a new random number or change the menu selection and so on. Then we update the ink display to show the new content. And as soon as we are done, we go back into a deep power down state. All of this happens very fast, with the only exception being ink display update. But even then, we are actually drawing tiny amounts of power from the battery. And since our use case is rolling a dice, counting things or acting as dashboard, it can be a relatively long time until we need to wake up our device and have it update the screen with new contents. So in my case, I'm using this tiny 50 mA battery, which even though it doesn't sound like a lot, it should last very very long time. For example, if I were to use this device as a dice, it should easily last for months. Obviously this number in practice will be greatly reduced because of many different factors. But regardless, the battery life should be more than enough, at least for my use case. Also, for your application, you can always select a much bigger or even smaller battery. So let's see it in action now. When the unit first powers up, we are presented with a main menu, where we can use left and right buttons to navigate through different modes. In our case, it's choosing between different dice types, counters, hero dashboard, and so on. Then we can use the middle button to select that option. After that, each button will get assigned a different action based on which mode we have selected. In this case, we have selected a dice, so any button we press will generate a random number using the built-in random number generator and show the result on the screen. For this project, we have opted to have multiple modes that you can select from, and the device remembers and stays in that mode even when you power it down. If you want to get back to the main menu and change the device mode, you can hold the middle button for 5 seconds and you're back at the main menu. Obviously, if you have a single application, you can remove the main menu and have your gadget running in a single mode all the time. In both cases, hopefully you will find this project to be a good starting point or a good inspiration for your next project. 
Now, I mentioned we have the option to use Bluetooth Low Energy or BLE for communication with other devices and to integrate our device into a much bigger system. You could use one device to roll a dice, and as soon as you are done, everyone at the table or the game master would get what the result of your roll is. It can be easily logged and tracked for everyone to see what happened and when it happened, but you could also add some fun to it by, for example, triggering an event. For example, based on your roll, the system can then generate a message and send it to a specific device or all nearby devices. Then those devices can respond to it by updating a hero dashboard to a new state or maybe even change the layout of the table, trigger special effects, and so on. It essentially allows you to program and control your game in whichever way you want. You could also leverage BLE communication with a central system and then relay messages over the internet to play with your friends remotely or to stream the game state online and in real time. Now, this video is already too long and very high level, but let me know in the comment section if you would like to see something like this in the future videos or maybe more videos on this or similar topics. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making this project. If you did, please hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, if you have reached this part of the video, thank you so much, you're amazing. That's all for today's video, thank you all for watching, my name is Sasha and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!